we're starting, right? Oh yeah, we're at 132. Okay, so comments. All right, we are gonna do a hard stop at nine o'clock <laughs> because we are exhausted and I'm having a very bad hair day. So no one says a word. <laughs> I know it's very humid here and I feel like Rosanna, Rosanna, Donna. Um, okay, so, so let's start. So tonight, uh, Jake um, and Steve had filed our um, brief in reply to the city. And uh, now it is in the hands of the judge. So what's going to happen is the judge is going to uh, review everything and hopefully right after July 4th or maybe on July 4th weekend, I mean, whenever he's so willing, he will send an email to the legal team advising them um, of the hearing. Am I freezing? I'm like freezing. Yeah. Oh, you froze with your eyes half open. <laughs> uh, My eyes but your open. audio is coming over. Right. But your picture is stuck. Wow. You look even worse now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'm sorry. Ah, hold on. I know. Hi, Carol. Let's another see. carol hi jen hi jerry <laughs> oh there we go joy mcdonald the brief was anything but brief wow impressive that is our legal team yes that is jake he is he is awesome awesome he I is dynamo him. you must have so many miles after your trip back and forth to new york city i know right <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at least I don't have, I have volume. So I'm just going to go with that for some okay. reason. I'm not. Uh, <clears throat> ah, Marianne looks like something from Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. There you go. Well, there you go, Miss Pizzatola. My hair must have interfered with the signal. There you go. See, you're causing static. <laughs> he says, hi, my dear friends. Great work yesterday. Hope okay. Everybody... Okay. Hello from Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Hello times 12. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so brief has been filed. Yes, it's been anything but brief. And that's because we have so many different causes of action. There was a lot to say. And there was so much to say that the city even asked if they could say more. And the judge is like, sure. So we were like, okay. So we answered more too. So anyway, uh, happy reading because it's a lot. It's like a 68 page document, um, but our brief is filed. It is now in the hands of the judge. And uh, from now forward, he will then um, he will then uh, make a determination on what day he's going to have a hearing. The fourth is obviously a holiday, so it will come after the fourth, sometimes like five, six or seven, I guess. And he will let us know what that day that hearing is. Um, just so you know, that will be an in-person hearing. And I would love to see a whole bunch of you at court. We will find out when, where, and what time. And as soon as we do, we will put it up there. And just remember, it is a small courtroom. So I don't know. We'll figure out. We'll let you know what we're looking for. Um, but what we're looking for a turnout at court. Then, um, um, let's see. So, and then he's going to make a decision. As he said to us, he would try to get that decision in by the 10th and de our determination uh, what to do with this opt out, waive your benefits, whatever. Cause we're really trying to put off having you do that. Um, if you don't have to, it's just, we don't want you to have to do it. So anyway, um, okay, so. That was that yesterday. <laughs> it was so awesome to see all of you guys. Uh, us that was live. That What's was that? Great. Thank you guys for coming out. Yes. It was. That was actually pretty cool. Um, hey, William, I did try to call you today. You don't need to call me back. I was just checking in on you, making sure you and the missus are okay. And um, I did have a question, but I was able to answer it on my own and, and not a problem. So, but I did want to check on you because um, I was worried about you. Um, and let's see, yesterday, let's go back to yesterday. So yesterday, 
great, great turnout at that rally. We need to keep seeing that kind of turnout. Um, Councilman Barron, everyone should be sending thank yous. Um, do it in your own words. It's one email. So just reach out to him, send an email, say thank you for what he did. Um, so now's the hard work. Now we know we've got to get this uh, bill uh, which is going into the civil service and labor meeting, we are going to need to get it out of that committee. So we're going to need to start sending emails, which we will start on Monday. So rest up, because Monday is a new day. Um, we will start a new homework assignment for you guys then. Um, and you notice that the process was a little unusual because we were sitting in the council and we were like, what the hell's going on? Is it going to come? Are they going to talk about it? Like, did they forget us? And and uh, and the councilman had been breaking my shoes for like two days. And he said, uh, uh, Mariana, I'm sick. Uh, I'm not coming into work today. Only kidding. <laughs> because he knows how many council persons said that they would help us and then walk back their help. But he's like, I'm not doing that. We're going. And I said, OK, sir. So. Um, great sense of humor he had, <laughs> but um, he wants you to know that he truly does believe in this and he wants to make sure that this gets seen through to the end. And so that he did say that now the real work starts. So here we go. Um, so we'll put that homework assignment up on Monday. Um, the legislation, so goes to civil service and labor. Also, you'll start, you've started to see some very unusual, awkward, confusing messaging coming out from some council persons, which we had to circle back and correct. You had an, a memo that came out on Twitter. Um, and uh, the message from on Twitter was from Councilman Botcher and uh, Councilman uh, Lincoln Ressler, which talked about Addendum B, which no one understood what the heck they were talking about. They were actually talking about attachment B to the contract. But then we also asked them to clarify what that was because in attachment B, they also talk about option A, B, and option C. And we wanted to know which one of those options they were talking about. So Councilman um, Link, uh, Ressler and Botcher both within the last couple of hours replied that they mean option C, which option C of the contract is kind of passe at this point, as the city says they're not doing it. What was option C? That you have the choice between senior care and the Aetna plan, and both are paid for by the city, no matter what your choice is. Um, and so that said, at least they did say that they supported that the Medigap be paid for by the city. And I said, thank you. And I hope you can sign on to uh, uh, intro 1099, which was introduced yesterday. I've not seen a reply to that today, um, this evening, but I'm sure, I hope, I pray, <laughs> one will be coming. So that was really the answer on that. Did I touch everything? Did I miss something? No, no, you did good. Okay. Yes, Lorinda, New York Post put out a piece for the editorial board shilling for the mayor. Girl, it is the New York Post. <laughs> and on the editorial board is people. Yes, there it is. <laughs> the there it is. People. We had a big article on page two, our efforts on how Garrido wants to sanction any council people who back Barron. I just emailed Garrido. Ooh, what'd you email, Garrido? <laughs> what'd you email? What'd you email? You gotta tell us. You gotta tell us. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I just emailed Garrido. Yeah, that's uh the, and you know what? I got people calling me texting me today that they believe Henry actually sent that to the to the press himself. And I'm like, what? And they said, yeah, because he wanted to look like the victim instead of a thug and Okay, I has that working for you. Um, but yeah, I can't believe that if he actually did that, that's a real low move. Um, I just sent an email to the CS Civil Service, oh, Labor Committee. Where did that go? Um, okay, hold on. I just, Mary Manapella, I read in the January, June, 2022. Daily News article regarding Henry verbally threatening the city council members who support Barron's legislation. How is this not considered duress by threat or undue influence? No, it absolutely is, is influence. 
Um, you know, they think, I guess, money buys money. But I'm going to tell you, this isn't the first time. The United Federation of Teachers, Unity, Michael Mulgrew, Henry Garrido have been threatening the council. Now, this is not new. This has been going on. It's only now, I guess, that it's being exposed because they had told us over the last two years that this has been happening. The pressure from the unions has been fierce and that both unions, if you remember, we put out little short videos, you know, calling them out every time we were told by counsel who didn't want to expose that it was coming. We felt compelled to put it out like, hey, stop threatening the council. But yesterday when they got that letter and we didn't even know it, we showed up at City Hall, me and Michelle, and we were being confronted that Henry Garrido sent out that letter to all of City Council yesterday. We had just walked up to, to the city council. We were like, what? And they're like, yeah, have you seen it? We're like, no. And so they started sending us the email. We were like, oh my God. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty ugly. Is there anything that can be done to stop this practice either legally or otherwise? Well, I'm thinking that's, that's someone else's circus. <laughs> I... What is it they say, right? Not my monkey, not my circus, or whatever it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now there's a bunch of flying monkeys around everywhere. Yeah. yeah all right. Money talks. There you go. Um, let's see. I'm glad the Common Sense Caucus put the amicus brief. So, Denise, I need you to keep calling that, that Common Sense Caucus because not all of them signed on to the legislation. So it's one thing to want to support litigation, but to them, that might be, you know, their way of saying, look, I'm helping you one way, but not the other. So very important to those that are on the, that have are live in the district where there's a, a common sense caucus member, thank them for the amicus, but you need their signature on that brief. And we need a minimum of 34 people on that, on that uh, legislation. So you guys got homework to do, you know, on that as well. Um, that's just doing that is not, is just not enough unfortunately um is that's that's just we 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 need more than that <laughs> um does the judge know about i don't i don't really think it's important that the judge know about that um i mean i don't know maybe it's, the lawyers will figure that out did Mulgrew send a threat to? Um, I know he's been they've been verbally pressuring them and in emails um, so that would just be another thing for the investigation team to, to, you know, to sort out. Yes, I know for a fact that that's been happening as council has been telling us that this is not new. So, and actually we were told yesterday, UFT was pressuring the council worse than Henry. So if you all got a window peek into Henry yesterday or today, um, we were told the United Federation of Teachers was worse, um, but interesting. And of course, we we actually watched them. They were sitting in the in the uh, balcony yesterday. Oh, that's right. That was the group that was in the right, the left, right, and sitting room, to your left, left. Side, right to the left. Yep, I know. Someone wrote that post marks on the wave out form doesn't count. Someone wrote that postmarks on the wave. I don't know what that means, Arlene. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> so I know Janet, she said she was late to the live stream. Did you announce the turnout for the noon rally yesterday? No, we didn't, but we know we had hundreds of people and the pen that the cops set up, it, people were squished in there, that there was actual overflow into, but beyond the gates. I know. Beyond, yeah. So it was uh, a decent turnout. We'll get a number. I actually forgot to message Nick today, so I should, um, it's probably too oh, okay. late to text. Well, I'll try to text him now, see if he knows. I mean, it, it was packed. I know and, it was more than the rally before that. And considering it that it was drizzling and rain was expected. Right. So was, thank you guys for still coming out, good. even though you knew it, there might be a chance of showers. Listen, like I always say, if, if I don't melt in the rain, nobody's going to melt in the rain. 
<clears throat> and then we also had um, the guy who showed up from upstate, from Rockland. Oh, the state legislature. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Sally Mimsabrowski. Who's introducing legislation at a state level that is similar to what we're doing here. Yes. So that was good. We need to send some love to him too. Yes, that's enough. Thank you for bringing that up. So we had two more things to share. <laughs> was Thank that yesterday, uh, for, well, that should have been, you guys should have seen that on the video. <laughs> Assemblyman yeah. Ken Zabrowski showed up to um, advise us that he was holding in his hand state legislation that he was going to introduce for us to protect our health care benefits. Um, so that's another good thing. And also um, Jamal Bowman also posted on Twitter yesterday that he was standing with us in solidarity. Um, as that is a federal level where this whole mess started, we are hoping to get this, the law that was passed um, that allows us to be in this situation, them to auto enroll us into these kinds of plans uh, rolled back. We're trying to push that back on a federal level. Um, also this afternoon, um, I was on a, or oh, this morning we were on, a, oh, this afternoon, with, on a meeting with PTPM, uh, Michael Antwerp and um, the a Hero people. They're, we're gaining some federal um, attention on this issue. Uh, the end of July would be Medicare's birthday. And we are going to um, plan to go to Washington DC to see that we can get some attention with these now national coalitions that we've been building um, to get some attention on this issue of privatization of Medicare. So um, we'll, we will post some more of that as we know uh, what that's going to look like. Right now they're talking about helping us finance a, a coach bus of about 50 or 65-ish people. We will find out how many people we need. Get um, It'll be a one-day trip, which means we would have to leave um, like the city hall area at about six in the morning to get to DC in about four, four and a half hours and um, do our happy birthday Medicare, uh, maybe a boxed lunch or whatever, and then come home. So it will be a long day. But I think it'd be a, a interesting thing to do. And since we are getting the attention that we are, we might as well capitalize on it to make sure that our voices get heard um, and at least start a conversation with movers and shakers that could actually move and shake things. So that's what we're looking to do. Um, so, but we'll post more information on that. And thank you to PTPM for helping us get in touch with um, with Be a Hero. Um, and for those that are not familiar, that organization is the same one that Brad Lander had mentioned in his um, memo where he refused to certify uh, the, con the Aetna contract, just so you're aware. Um, let me come back. Rescind COPE, which funds political action. So so that's been a, a very long debate. You know, some people are still paying dues to their former union because, out of solidarity or out of loyalty, whatever your reasoning is. Um, and uh, your COPE money is also money that is going to be used towards political action to pay, to pay or donate to council persons that are potentially working against you. So that's your union advocating for them, not you, but using your money. Um, so remember that it's like going gambling, you know, the house is using the money. You got to use the house's money. <laughs> They're using your money <laughs> to advocate against you. So you may want to think twice about cope. Um, ladies, you did a great job. I live in Florida, but stood in solidarity. These people are a group of mafias. <laughs> I know uh, there was um, there was a uh, a couple of good memes that Joe put up on the website today. I thought were cute. The 
the UFT was there in the city council with us? No. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> this no, was they with us. Yeah, they no, weren't they... with us. Like they were in the room with us, but they definitely weren't with us. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 no. No, this is like their lobbyist and yeah, like they're always, they're always at the stated, you know, giving us the side oh, eye. Right. They're, they're at the side eye. I think they take up some seats, right? I yeah, think that's they always they try to take up seats. Right. <laughs> Sandra List, Steinberg, Lynn Schmidt, you will need a few buses. <laughs> um, yes, Elizabeth Warren is supposed to be part of that trip as well. Did the news cover us? We were on Fox 5. We were also on Labor News, which is a live stream labor show. Um, so we did have two cameras there yesterday. Um, the Daily News was there. Lab uh, Work Bites was there. Um, um, Stuck Nation, WBAI, Bob Henley was there. Um, Susan Jaffe from Kaiser Health was there. Um, Politico was there. We, we we had some good coverage yesterday. So, and it's not, that's not, it's not ending. Trust me when I tell you where this is, it's starting to finally build. Um, a bus trip is reminiscent of the 60s and 70s protests in Washington. <laughs> Well, a lot of people got rid of cope. The, hold on, this is funny. Hold on. This is a Contacting Dinowitz's office as recently as today, still studying proposal. I didn't study that much for the SATs. It, and it's only two sentences. Could you imagine if he had to read like a real bill that was like 20 pages long? What would the poor guy, and he was a teacher for Pete's sake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was great, Bruce, thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh, seriously. And Sandra said it should have read quite a few buses. Well, and you know what, though, too? We were walking out of City Hall yesterday, and who is in front of me but Councilman Justin Brownin? And I said, so, Councilman, <laughs> where do you stand on signing the legislation? Uh, I got to look at it. Really? The one we've sent you like a hundred times? The two-sentence bill that you all had emailed, that we emailed you. Uh, that we talked about at length for like two hours at breakfast. Yeah, that one. Okay. And also uh, his aide, right? Didn't his aide ignore you too and kept running? Yes, we had just walked out of City Hall and I was still holding my phone on live stream. And I said, so Peter Spencer, how are you doing? How do you feel about this bill? Keep on walking. Never mind, you didn't hear me. <laughs> I don't see you. I don't see you. I don't see you. I don't hear you. Side eye. <laughs> it's all right. I was a lady. <laughs> yes, you were. Yes, you were. Like, you know. AM New York just quoted Barron today saying about Adams with another issue. I think it's him being stubborn. Just quoted quoted Barron today saying, I think it's him being stubborn, being the type of mayor that he's on a delusional power trip. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sending a plethora, I love that word, plethora. Plethora of thanks, they're all awesome. Thanks, Patty Kimber. <laughs> I haven't sent a dime to DC 37 after I retired in 2009. They never did a damn thing for us. 
Hope. So from what it looks like, if you wanted to stop your COPE payments to the UFT, you need to write them a letter. Please make sure you keep a copy of it in case they say they never got it. That way you can keep sending it to them. <laughs> No, Ellen, I don't think we're doing buses from upstate. It'll probably be here in Manhattan and then leave from here. May have and so DC 37 has the same kind of a cope thing, but it's called the people's money. So if you're you're doing people's, that's the same kind of people's money is the same thing as cope uh, in UFT. Diane, wishing you all a pleasant and relaxing weekend. Thanks, Diane. Does Brandon realize how many retirees he had in his district? <laughs> you said had as past tense. Um, he does have a primary. You know, I think he does recognize that there's a lot of you in his district, but he has not responded. I don't understand why. He kept saying he'd get back to me. He hasn't gotten back to me. And Yesterday, he acted like he didn't even know who the heck I was, and we only had breakfast together like two weeks ago for two hours. What can I tell you? Those like Adams are the ones that you need to watch out for their sly antics. Have you heard anything from Gail Brewer? So we did reach out to her today. Short answer, no. I'm living in Maryland, just outside DC. Please let me know if I can join the fight when you come to Washington. We will definitely let you know. Absolutely. Because it will have to be an RSVP thing. Like you're going to have to reply that you're coming. We need to know who's coming. We need your contact info. So you're going to have to sign up for the bus. And if you live in the area in the vicinity of DC and you want to go on your own, we're still going to need to know that you're coming. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, that's that's moving forward. Let's go step by step. Yeah. We'll, you know. Well, that'll be the end of July. Yeah. I believe Brandon's district has been redrawn and he will be facing Ari Kagan in the fall. That is correct, Marsha. I love it, Diane Lenski. Since God speaks to the mayor, pray that God will tell him the mayor to stand with us. <laughs> we need to do like that movie um, where where God had to answer all those emails and God was played by who's that comedian? Oh, uh, Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty. <laughs> What's the deal with Pirelli from Staten Island? He says he's with us, but not. I don't know, Karen. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, you should feel so proud of what has happened yesterday. All your hard work made it happen. Thank you a million times over. Joe Borelli is running on a pose, so he's a shoe in. Camila Hanks is running on a pose, so she's a shoe in. Well, if there's still an election, you could always write in another name. COPE has nothing to do with union dues. I dropped COPE. Still pay union dues for benefits. Um, but Gail, you don't really get a benefit for that dues as a retiree. And under the law, they can't stop a benefit because you withdraw your dues. Not that I'm advocating for that. I'm just saying. The only thing that would be, if you are UFT, the only thing that would be tied to that would be like a catastrophic plan that you needed to be a member to be part of, but that's it. And I'm not even sure that's legal that they would do that.
<laughs> You're right, Diane, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> other than co-sponsors, do we know of other council members who will vote yes on the bill? So we did post the bill on the website, on our Facebook page. So you can track and see. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can quickly take a look at if anyone jumped on by since today. Nope. It's still the same. Councilman Barron, Ina Vernikov, Lynn Shulman, Linda Lee, Alexa Viles, Shahana Hanif, Kristen Richardson Jordan, Christopher Marte, Shikar Krishnan, Joanne Ariola, Vicky Palladino, and Ari Kagan. How many is that? Nine, 10, 12. 12. Got to get to 34. Um, they did not endorse us. Tony and Vela did not endorse us. And Tony and Christopher Bay both had the UFT um, endorsement. The only one that did not was Mr. Graziano. And Mr. Graziano has been a very strong favorite, uh, um, had been a very strong proponent of what we are doing, supporter of what we are doing. Um, so if that, those are your questions, but that is the, also the same district as Vicki Palladino. Um, and I think that's it. UFT welfare fund is not tied to your dues. That is not your eyeglass and dental. If you stop paying dues, you do not lose your UFT welfare fund benefits. What happened with Gail Brewer, who even said in her recent newsletter, she had helped our attorneys. What chutzpah? Uh, sorry, Ellen, she has not yet signed on and Diane, neither has Tiffany Caban. We need 34 as soon as we can get them because that's what moves us through the committee. Once they see that that committee, you wanna look at the civil service and labor committee, that should be where your primary um, target concern should be. We will start posting some of this next week. And um, that way, you know, you know, we'll have the messaging put out and the list so you could do an action email and, and make it easier. Lynn Shulman did support us, Lorraine. She's actually a co-signer on the bill. Eric Botcher did not sign it yet. Yes, I'm aware. Ellen, yes, I'm aware. You, um, Karen, Karen says, I thought we lost UFT ship if we stopped paying dues. That is your catastrophic plan. That's it. As far as my, I, I understand, that is it. Kevin Dowling, sorry I came in late. Did you know Henry Garrido was on New York One about retiree insurance? No, Kevin, what did he say? No, Eric Dinowitz did not sign on yet, Roberta. No, Rosalie, that is absolutely incorrect. If Trudy is on here, she will tell you for a fact regarding UFT dues. I was told by UFT I would lose welfare fund benefits, life insurance, and SHIP. You will not lose your welfare fund. It is SHIP and catastrophic, is what Michael Antwerp is saying. I know we've been through this like a million times. You do not lose your welfare fund benefits. You pay for ship anyway, 10 bucks a month. Judy Zimmerman, you can do what you, as a Floridian, you could do everything we do. You could make calls, you could do emails. There's nothing you can't do. Kevin says, he said, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll see if I can find the link. Errol Lewis was totally unprepared as a journalist to interview Henry Garrido on the Medicare Advantage scam for retirees and didn't do a lot of research on the matter. There's no more inside City Hall for me. 
And Errol Lewis has been ignoring us. He has, for two years, Carol can tell you, Carol and I sat, when I was staying in her apartment, Carol and I stayed up one night and writing him both and emailing him and messaging him, texting him, tweeting him, he ignored us. Right, Paula Ram, you only pay for ship UFT if you want ship. Ship and catastrophic are through NICET, and that's how UFT gets around it. I've been retired since 2005. I stopped paying UFT dues at that time, and I never lost my welfare fund benefits. The UFT lies. Harriet Novick. Thank you, Harriet. You just reinforced what I said because people are being lied to. Yes, Michael, I know my, Michael Mulgrew over, oh, makes almost $400,000 a year. <laughs> it's on again at 10 p.m. <laughs> I guess I'll have to try to find it. Someone send me a link to it if it, if it gets posted. I think I have two more free videos. <laughs> I tape City Hall. We'll let you know what Garrido said. Thank you, Dan. When I spoke to Julie Menon's intern, I was told that she will consider our bill only after it's brought to a hearing because she likes to do her fact-finding. I'm so tired of these excuses. Hey, Laura, you can talk to, um, you can talk to, to uh, Carol here because Carol lives in Julie's district. <laughs> and I've been to Julie's office unannounced and met with one of her staff. Yeah. She's highly funded by the unions. She's not going to be on our side. And if she does, I will personally go to Julie Menon's office with a box of cupcakes. <laughs> Do you know about the petition, Bentkowski? That, that petition is ours, Kathy. We, that's us. Bentkowski is us. Right. <clears throat> Errol Lewis threw Garrido softballs. That was a save your butt move. The mayor probably got him on that interview because he's good friends with the mayor. So... All right, it's nine o'clock. It's actually after nine, and we did. Wait say a we second, do. I gotta do oh. my. That's spiel. it. I forgot you. I forgot you, Carol. It's okay. It's so okay. we had a lot of activity this week. Um, the brief that Jake and Steve, our attorneys, filed today is amazing. Take your time. Read through it slowly. A couple of pages. A read easy because they're like a table of contents so you can scan through those and get to the meat of the brief and everything in there is incredible but guess what jake and steve are not working for free <laughs> we gotta pay them and the way we pay them is by all of the people watching us and on our Facebook page making contributions. And that's how we manage. So send in your money. As I keep saying, Zelle is the easiest. There are no fees at either end for Zelle. And you can use PayPal, Venmo. If you send a check, please be sure to make the check out to us and sign the checks. You got to sign the check. Yes. You were just out. No, that would be cheating. We can't yeah, sign somebody dog. else's no, he's name. He's <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> but the lawyers, as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. And we're paying for excellent legal representation, which is what has gotten us this far. 
and it it's not free. So hopefully um, we will put out that messaging on the on Monday about what to do or Sunday for Monday. Um, if you have a friend that hasn't donated, tell them the time is now. We have three cases going on at the same time. <laughs> so the I was just going to say the same thing that if you have a friend, those of you who are watching right now, if you have a friend and you share information with that friend and that friend has not contributed, you got to kind of push them to contribute because they're going <laughs> to benefit and they will have done nothing. That's awesome. Scold them, scold them. <laughs> but then they tell two friends and then they tell two friends. Wasn't that a Clairol commercial? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyway, but um, on a good note, thank you, moderators, for doing such a great job. Fantastic. And the page, like, calm, and while we were out there doing our thing, thank you for everybody who showed up and wasn't afraid of the rain and like all that good energy for all those who couldn't attend. Uh, gave us good weather because it did say it was supposed to rain. It rained for maybe what? couple minutes when the wind blew and right it wasn't there. that heavy right. of a it, just, it just drizzled when the wind blew and then that was it so it just you know so i gotta light more candles and just you know saw and again i love my little wampaloo magnet thank you and i hope you got your uh i got your email my email because i did email out today saying thank you and for the little mug and again, um, thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't spend more time answering questions while we were out there. We were just like crazy busy and it was just such a long, long, long day. And, you know, hopefully we can spend a little bit more time answering questions, you know, when we see you guys out there. So, and that's all I got. <laughs> so on that note, everyone, thank you again for a really great um, a great week for all of your advocacy, doing your homework. Thank you to John and Lee for helping us yes. with logistics. Thanks to Stephen and um, and Jack and everyone that was helping out uh, with um, with the rally, um, keeping crowd control, being rally marshals, the sound system, and everything. Thanks to Plumbers Local One for having our backs, literally. Um, yeah. And the active members that did come out that I know were kind of reluctant. They didn't yep. really, they were kind of blending in, but that's okay. Local we, we won't, transit we, workers. You know, we don't want to pressure you. Right, right. Transit workers, right. Local 100 showed up to help us out. This was their first rally that we did, they did with us. Um, we're trying to show them the ropes and what we've been doing and how it's been working. So um, the other thing is you will see us post, um, and moderators, if you're listening, we will post a link for them to um, put a, up a link for the MTA hearing. And this is where you can speak your mind because they are being forced off their Medigap into Medicare Advantage as well, also by Aetna. They had three plans, two by Medicare Advantage, one uh, was a supplemental, all were from Medicare, um, all were from Aetna, and they their union pulled the Medigap plan away from them too. The hearing that the hearing link, and I'll make sure I put when I post this, it will be on its own, so you see what it's for. Um, it will be there will be budget hearings for the MTA. They're saying that sixty percent of this MTA's budget has to do with healthcare. That's a crock of poo poo. So we're going to have to say something about that. That they should made a promise to their retirees. I'm trying to be nice, Michelle. Um, <laughs> And so when you see that link, we're going to tell you that it is an MTA hearing. Please put your two cents in that no employer or union should be forcing their people into Medicare Advantage, that they should have the right to stay on traditional Medicare, and they should figure out how to pay for it. That is a promise that they made. So whatever you want to do, we'll tell you the talking points, put it in your own words, but that will be a link that we will post. The MTA has asked our support on that. They've come out to support us. And we are trying to work together on this on a statewide issue. Their benefits come from New York State. Ours comes from New York City. And we will need help like this from other unions on a state level to help 
with our state legislation. So now you start to see it coming all together. Um, so we are all one big family. When we say in solidarity, hello, Henry, Harry, and Michael, this is what solidarity looks like, is helping a brother and a sister. Not helping your hand into their pocket, but helping lift them up. Which I is how the unions were originally used to be. started. <laughs> they say what, back in the day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So that's the scoop. Um, you've got our homework. What I do would, would like you to do is thank, um, thank Councilman Barron. You can write that email on your own this weekend. Please just write a thank you and say, you know, that you appreciate what he's done. And um, I believe he's district 42. We'll put it up. Sure. Um, but, but also we should thank uh, that lovely woman, Evie, that was speaking at the rally. She was wonderful. Right. Yes. She's always wonderful. And thanks for the few that helped me hand out the flyers and the posters. I truly appreciate that. So on that note, have a great weekend. And we will see you yes. Monday. <laughs> Ciao, guys. <laughs> Good night. Retiree meeting dismissed. <laughs> right.